Good evening everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table um, for a bit of breaking news but before we do that, the most important thing I know for some of you is to see what is in the glass today um, it's an Italian red from the Piemonte region it's a Barbera, Barbera, Barbara anyway, it's that grape variety and it's being drunk this evening very lightly chilled, so cheers mm -hmm -hmm. right, so, breaking news firmware release for the P2 range, that includes the Phantom 2, the Vision Plus and the Vision uh, with some specific things just for the Vision and Vision Plus. So the main news is that we've got new main controller firmware which is now 3.06 and the central board firmware is going up to 1.0.1.32 and if you've got a Vision or a Vision Plus, the app is going to 1.0.42 on iOS and 1.0.52 on Android. So, what are the changes? Well, if you look at the change log, um, the main new feature is a new battery level system. You get a low battery level warning and a critical battery level warning. And you can set up those two either using the assistant or if you've got a Vision or Vision Plus, you can actually set it up via the app, which is interesting for two reasons. One, it's cool that we can do it without plugging in. And two, it shows that we can maybe use the app going forward to do some more interesting changes, but we'll see. Anyway, so... Um, the oper they operate, these, these battery warning levels seem to operate differently depending on whether you've got a P2 or a Vision or a Vision Plus. So if you've got a Vision or a Vision Plus, what happens is that it will basically track your height and distance from home and calculate the amount of battery power it thinks it will need you to get back with a margin. So there'll be a new indicator at the top of the screen and then when it falls below a certain threshold called the low battery level, it'll give you a pop-up on the app, a bit like it does at the moment if you enter a no-fly zone or you, you have a um, compass calibration or you lose, um, you lose um, control signal, you get a little pop-up that tells you that. So there's going to be something like that. You can then choose go home and it will automatically just come straight back along the quickest point, the quickest line, or you can cancel it and carry on flying and then it will hit critical level and it will go, listen, that really is enough and it will start to auto land. You can then do the usual thing of giving it some throttle. The throttle response will gradually get less and less and you have to push harder and harder, but you can at least steer it away from a lake or a tree and, and land it clear. And then once it lands, it will power off and it won't let you do anything else. Um, that's it, you've hit the lower level, so that's interesting. Um, if you've got a P2, which I have as well as my vision, then basically that will be enabled by default. So the, the automatic go home will get activated if the battery reaches that low level warning. Now when it starts to do that, you can get control back by using the remote and doing the flick of the S1 like you would during a normal kind of um, return to home caused by loss of control signal and then you can continue normal flight again you can sort of come out of it that way and then if it hits the red level and it's it will it will start to descend uh, you won't be able to stop the descent but you can again kind of push throttle and slow it down so you can move it away and then again once it's landed as a p2 power off motors finished that's it you know you need to go and swap it for a new battery so that's a fairly major new feature Quite interesting that DJI have chosen to look at that. Um, I think given the... What I don't know is how it's going to cope with some of the people who are really pushing the long distance stuff with these things. But presumably it'll factor that in. Whether you can... And I need to look in more detail when I've played with it for a bit. How, how much you can set that. To, so for you long distance flyers, that may be something you want to you have a look at more closely. Other things that it claims to do is the, the descent speed will be automatically adjusted based on your current altitude. Now I don't know what that means because I haven't had a chance to play with all these things yet because it's dark. Um, but um, I assume, and it's only an assumption here, but I assume what it means is that the higher above the ground you are, the quicker it will allow your descent rate to be. I assume. But I don't know. But we'll have a look at that. The other thing um, that I mentioned is the minimum adjustable height limit is set to 20 meters. 
I don't know what that means. I don't know whether that's relate referring to the um, um, the minimum height where you can start a safe descent, or whether it means it's the minimum for adjusting your um, flight limits. No idea. I'll have a have a play and find out. Um, Video signal from P2 Vision. The Phantom Vision, sometimes people were getting, especially with the later firm, firmware, some, some, um, and the app updates, getting some video drops. They claim that they have fixed it. So if you're having video drops on your Vision, not your Vision Plus, um, this might be good for you. Um, they also claim various bug fixes, which they don't tell us about, which is very annoying, but there we go. Um, one thing that might be important to some of you, I know there's been a bit of buzz about the magnetic declination issue, whereby if you live in certain areas of high magnetic declination, you get toilet bowl effect and J hooking, and you know there's been some work going on in the background with a sort of beta tester group, I know. And what their DJI have released into this firmware is a what people tended to find was that if they're if they're flying around in these areas of magnetic declination after a few minutes the, the kind of the NASA learns what's what and the flight improves what this update brings you is a store of that de learned declination value so that in the next time you fly it will have stored it already so it should be straight in with the good flight characteristics not have to go through five or six minutes of learning and then when you switch the battery off it loses it and you have to start again. So that will be very good for you guys who were suffering uh, from that side effect if it works. Um, the other thing that they've done is they've made some changes to the app for the Vision and the Vision Plus. Um, so you obviously we can you can now change that battery level uh, thing in in, your, in the app, which is great. There is a compass calibration feature that's been added, which I, I believe means you can actually start the calib calibration feature from the app rather than flicking the switch. In other words, you can put it into calibration mode via the app, which would be nice. Um, and they've added a hotline feature, so you can get to sale to um, post sales support. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's. Some fairly big changes. I'm going to download it onto both my P2 and my Vision, and I'm going to spend a couple of days um, having a little test. I won't be able to do much solid until Thursday, um, owing to my childcare responsibilities. But if anybody wants to be a really early adopter, um, let us know down here what's, what what your experience is. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the hot off the press news. We have new firmware, new central board firmware, and new app updates as well. So quite a big one. So fingers crossed, it'll be a good one. Um, as I said, if you've got any flight testing experiences, let us know. And as soon as I've run some flights and tested out some of these new features, I'll do it with both the P2 and the Vision, and I'll let you know. And let you know how things are panning out. So um, happy flying and hopefully it's a good update for all of us and I'll see you again soon here back on the kitchen table. Cheers.